let's a couple things. One, I always talk about what happened at the last board meeting, and again, I went through uh, the video from the last board meeting, and um, just some of the interesting things. They talked about the design con contract for the BRT. Uh, there were talking about the October service changes, which we knew about here. Um, and then a discussion about the community bus planning. And uh, what I thought was really interesting was that, um, and I think you may talk about this with Forward Pinellas too, the, the update, but, but uh, what Blanton talked about the whole role that Forward Pinellas is involving with transit in all of the planning in something that they call Adva Advantage Pinellas. And it's about land use as well as transit. And so it, it makes, they, like he was saying that, you know, we have a good system of roads, but it's really important that we have the other the other factors in place that make for walkable communities and make it easier for people to, you know, live and get transit to where they work and, and, and live. So it was, that was, again, very interesting, very interesting discussion and, and input from the board. And, and the point was that they wanted to get the approval to go ahead and start doing the community outreach for, uh, for the planning period. So, um, yeah, was there anything else at the board meeting that you can think of other than um, no, I thought we had a we had a pretty interesting presentation at the beginning of the board meeting about um, our our first mile last mile program that we do with uh, Uber and taxis, where there was there's a gentleman whose um, whose job moved from where it was right on the bus line, uh, both coming from his house to to work and back to one of those buildings that's along US-19 up in Clearwater, where, you know, US-19 is now like a, a highway and it's elevated. So <clears throat> the bus stop to go back home is now on the other side of US-19. Um, and he's visually impaired. So he, it, he would have to walk from where his new job is a pretty good distance up and through to get to the next underpass to get over and then back down. So, he takes uh, the Direct Connect. He takes an Uber or a taxi, and even though as a crow's fly, it's only about a hundred feet or whatever, it's just across the street. It's actually like a mile um, uh, ride, but that's the way he uh, he can still keep riding. So I thought that was kind of an interesting, not exactly what we envisioned when we created that program, but it's like something that's really needed in Pinellas County, yeah. especially there in Clearwater in that area. Yeah. So I thought, I thought that was kind of a neat uh, story. And then, um, yeah, as Gloria said, we had a good discussion about the bus planning um, activities. I will kind of give a little update on that. Um, so the board approved, uh, you saw the presentation at your last meeting about this idea to uh, concentrate, um, take funding that we save by uh, reducing the lowest performing routes in our system, and taking the, those buses and drivers and money and putting them onto the highest performing routes to make them more frequent, run later at night, etc. cetera. Um, well, um, that's a good plan, but um, the consultants have come back and uh, suggested it's not just cutting the routes that nobody rides or very few people ride. There's some kind of cuts that are a little bit more deep to the bone that are not going to be very pleasurable um, in order to generate enough um, resources to, to really improve the, the new services. So as uh, Gloria said, the good news is we're coordinating this whole effort with uh, the MPO and Ford Pinellas and branding it together. Ford Pinellas is scheduling a discussion with the County Commission and, and the uh, MPO themselves in January coming January about having the county provide additional funding to for public transit in Pinellas County um, which would be an amazing thing because our friends across the bay over in Tampa um, Hillsborough County provides three to five million dollars a year for uh, additional transit beyond what um, the transit agency over there can provide and uh, Pinellas County has never provided any funding to anything but roads and uh, so anyway, I know I'm preaching to the choir on this, but uh, 
So we're going to delay that public um, outreach on our proposed plans a little bit later to, to better coincide with that workshop that the MPO is going to be holding and then to truly try to target what we know are going to be concerned citizens um, to the place where they can make a difference, where to, to the uh, Ford Pinellas and the County Commission. Um, because they do have the ability to provide additional uh, resources that we could make the improvements to the core routes with and we wouldn't have to cut back as many or you know the routes that really still need to be replaced. Um, so just a little update on that. We're gonna basically we were gonna go out right out to the public and start showing them the plans, but we're gonna delay that probably until after Thanksgiving uh, to to be more time there. Um, I think that's pretty much it. You covered there. By the way, one other factor when when you were talking about that, uh, one of the things I noticed when when I was looking at the plans, and I talked with Ross Silvers about this is you know, DART is all about paralleling the routes. And yeah. if, if there isn't a route there, then there isn't DART. And so my real concern was how do we ensure that any changes, is, because using Direct Connect is a lot more difficult for people who are DART customers. That's right, yes. Um, well, I mean, that's certainly something that Ross has uh, made us all aware of, and that's really, something that we're trying to be very cognizant of because um, we definitely don't want to, um, if we eliminate some routes, especially to uh, some bus routes that go by medical facilities, right. we just got a survey back that something like 96% of all DART trips are to and from medical facilities. That makes sense. And um, um, if they can't get there on the bus, more and more people are gonna ride on DART. Yeah. You know, which is more expensive per trip, and Care Ride has run out of vehicles essentially. They are at all time record high um, service already, so that just makes the trips take longer or you have to wait longer. It's not good. So um, we're mapping out all those uh, trips and uh, medical facilities and things like that to make sure that those don't, we don't, don't get cut. Make it worse. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, just a couple other quick things. I wanted to uh, talk with everybody again about the uh, our, our STAR program. Uh, in fact, uh, Bob Lasher's not here. One of the things he's doing today is, he, uh, on other things, but he's talking to a Chamber of Commerce. He and I mapped out to make sure that we get out to Chambers of Commerce, and we've gone to a couple of different uh, locations, and I'm trying to get to the cities. I'm trying to talk to the people in Clearwater and St. Pete. And I talked with the county. Uh, they have a now a committee on people with disabilities because that's again a group that really cares very much about safe access, and so we're telling everybody about the uh, about the star program uh, so that we can get more people to you know come up with nominations and, and and also for cities to understand how they can deliver on this. The one thing I wanted to throw out to all of you is that the nominations that we've gotten so far, we had Old Tomorrow as the winner, and then a couple that have been sub submitted since then, but a lot of representation in Clearwater, because I'm putting those in, um, and then one Pinellas Park nominee that's coming in. But I, I would love to see people from the South County, if you can find stuff that they're doing right, see if you can find some locations where they've really made access good. Because I think once cities start to recognize that this is a, this is a real deal, this is a real program, then they may, they may get more excited about doing something. Um, I wanted to uh, just add that in. And then the other thing that um, Mary Ann wanted to encourage all of you to, to, to again, try to get more uh, people to put in there. You, make sure you all have your applications in for your track membership for next year if you haven't given them to Mary Ann. And also, if you can think of anyone who might be, if you encounter someone on the buses, you know, that you think might be interesting candidates for it, try to get more people to put in their application. They may or may not actually, we may have more application than we have slots for next year, but that would be a, a real, you know, not, not, a, not a bad problem to have more people uh, available than, than we have. So, um, and I think that's it. So, okay, um, the other, the next thing then is the Forward Pinellas update. Okay.
I'm in the spot that I missed the forward panelist meeting. Uh, I was ill that particular Thursday night. But let me give you just this little bit. Um, I'm now uh, sitting also on the TBARDA meeting as part of forward panelists. And I would invite all of you guys to get involved with that. It's the regional transit, uh, and it has a citizen committee. Where is that held? It, it meets on uh, Cyprus, uh, just by the airport, a mile so south of the it's airport. It's in Tampa, though. It's in it Tampa. is in Tampa. Uh, Bill Johnson uh, is now a citizen since he's right. rolled off the council, and he is the chair of the <coughs> CAC, it's an advisory committee for Tivarda. And um, those guys are getting presentations all over the place, uh, folks from USF. Uh, with regional direct, I mean, it is it is powerful, powerful presentations. I attended two of the Smart Street presentations up in Dunedin and down in the Martin Luther King, and I've just been surprised how angry local residents are about making things walkable and with transit access. Uh, and when you get our folks who say, "Hey, I have a gas station, I have a convenience store, you're going to run me out of business," and you can't say enough. No, if you go down to one lane, you'll still have the same number of cars, but it won't run anybody over, and you can't make that sale. It's, it's so intuitive that you're going to run me out of business that no amount of math, no amount of fact, don't give me the facts, my mind is made up, you know, that old story. And there are folks in both cases, what's that joke with the pitchforks and the torches, saying, no, you can't do this to me. And uh, I was, again, my benefit of giving you more facts isn't going to help. Um, I don't know if you know that at uh, Countryside Hospital, they just built a huge parking structure that could have been another hospital. Oh, yes, yes. Right? Oh, and they I, did, yes. Yeah, I was going to name that the, the Green Light Pinellas parking structure because had we had buses. And they don't even have a pedestrian walkway to oh. drive across there. I finally got the county to at least consider putting that in. It's, yeah. like, it's like we have a perfectly good bus route that goes by there and you have to go Block. And if you remember in green lights, you know, St. Anthony, all of the hospitals were back in green light, and uh, the opponents were saying, that's payola, that's kickback. And I said, well, no, because why should I take a piece of property where I could put MRIs and operating rooms and even a heliport for emergency landing? Why should I have to build a multi million dollar parking structure? But up there, McMullen Booth doesn't even have anything except DART access. And so I just looked at that thinking, there in concrete is the a living failure of uh, overseeing. 62, yeah, 62 does go by there. Yeah, that's right, that's right, 62 does, that's right, on the back end. Right. Um, the last piece is, and I'd like to have Marianne mail this out, if you guys know about, there's a little blurb, and I'm very, very upset about this, it's called It's Time Tampa Bay dot com. Yes. Have we talked about this here? No, we haven't. Okay, um, it's a little questionnaire it's being uh, kicked off by Hillsborough but it's for the three Pinell for the three counties Hillsborough Pinellas and Pasco and it's one of these little I call it like a spark that's going to become a fire that's going to become a forest fire and now is the time to get this spark put out especially if you live in North County it's three options to look 30 years down the road and option one of course is TVX the thing right now with Howard Franklin and the bus and this and that and option three is total rail, running rails through Oldsmar and Clearwater. and Like, we couldn't get green light done. This is like seven times the green light. And so I'm saying that's a fish that they know is never going to happen. Option two is the one that FDOT, I'm sure, is, uh, is proposing and slipping it in here so nobody sees it. And it is a freeway that starts at PIE, at PIE, runs right up East Lake Boulevard, all the way to State Road 54 and Trinity, turns, and runs right across 54 to 275. Parallel to US 19, all those residences, Landsbrook and East Lake and Trinity and, and Safety Harbor, uh, Enterprise Road, if you can picture having US 19 and then one mile east having another freeway and saying, well, you know, that traffic's pretty heavy. And of course, what really that is all about is you put that freeway in, people will start building houses in <coughs> Fernando you'll have saved, maybe traffic will be low for six months, maybe a year, and then they're going to say, well, now we need a freeway up Seven Springs. Now we need a freeway. I mean, it's, it's what happens with roads. Roads don't solve traffic. They just let builders build more sprawl. And so I went to the uh, regional planning and told them, if you do this, there will be people with torches and pitchforks and laying in front of bulldozers and all of you will be recalled. This will be fluoride all over again. There will be people screaming at you. However, if you kill this now, put that little spark out, 
you'll all be heroes. You'll be reelected for life. <laughs> you know, which do you want? And they said, oh, you don't understand. This is just a little questionnaire. Yeah, BS2. The moment that FDOT ran the connector to US 19, okay, sure. Oh, but we're going to run we bought the drag strip, and we're going to run that little thing up to East Lake. Well, where are all those cars? Oh, we're dropping down into Drew. Well, let's run a little flyover. Oh, now we're backed up at Enter. Well, let's run a little flyover. Let's run a little flyover to where? All the way to Trinity. And that's what this questionnaire is. It's the logical outcome of gutting the roads in front of PIE. So, so what should we do? Should we, should we're we going to send out the questionnaire. It's timetampabay.com, and you should tell everybody about it and make sure you vote down number two, which I is what I think. It's a smoke screen for option two. The other two things are just nonsense. And I said, if, if you guys don't stop it now, you're going to have people like me, transit activists, going door to door at, by the way, daycare centers, elementary schools, East Lake High School, how many schools, churches, there's those giant mega churches that they have to stop the roads for on Sunday. They're going to have to do the go around a mile to get into church or out of church. So are you guys crazy? Well, there's a lot of cars. Tell them not to drive that road. Tell them to take 19. So it's time Tampa Bay .com is a little trial balloon. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, right. It's the F dot long-term plan to sneak this in, and it needs to be extinguished now while it's a spark, not while it's a fire, and not when it's a forest fire and there's bulldozers out there and we're going to have to chain ourselves to trees. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they will we may want to get some more information and talk about, you know, get the actual details. And it's starting on the Hillsborough side. Right. So that's my theory. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, um, the next item on our agenda then is to review the meeting minutes from our August 14th meeting. Have all of you had a chance to look at it? Do you have any changes, additions? Okay, um, then if there are no changes, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, David, so. and a second? Second. Okay. Um, okay, and all in favor of approving the minutes? Anyone opposed? The uh, next item is uh, Mr. Miller's going to talk to us about the Looper Agreement. Okay, so for today's um, production, the role of Cassandra Borchers will be played by Brad Miller. <laughs> <laughs> this is an action item on your agenda to approve a uh, beautifully bureaucratic sounding thing called a looper operating agreement. This is a contract between PSTA and the looper group down in St. Petersburg. The looper group is a non-profit organization that runs the looper the downtown trolley circulator system in, in uh, has run it for many years in downtown st petersburg historically um, the funding for that looper um, trolley has come mostly from psta and the city of st petersburg and then a little bit comes from what an entity called the downtown partnership which is mainly sort of like the businesses, some businesses in downtown St. Petersburg. We've been working with the folks in downtown St. Pete for a long time on trying to improve the looper. Ridership on the looper, especially since the pier closed um, and is being reconstructed, um, has gone down uh, because of a huge portion of their uh, ridership was out to the end of the pier and back. That was where they had lots of riders. Um, we would like, you know, any of you who have been to downtown St. Petersburg know that it has completely changed uh, over the last, say, decade or so. And there's lots more people living down there. There's lots more activity down there than there was before. And the goal would be to create a new system that could be actually used by residents and maybe workers. Right now, almost 100% of the ridership, according to surveys, are tourists on the current looper. 
one thing in the transit world is loops are not the greatest kind of transit to ride. And this is certainly, as you can see, kind of like a crazy loop. Um, loops are very confusing to understand for normal transit riders because where you get off is not where you get on. You don't get on on a bus stop across the street. You have to walk somewhere else in downtown St. Pete to get on the bus to go back to wherever you came from. So loops everywhere in the world are challenges. Um, so the goal here would be to make a more frequent, as long as they run more pretty frequently um, and they go to the destinations that, like the hospital district down here in the bottom and USF um, area, then we think we can get um, different kinds of riders. We're also going to make the um, service for free. Right now it costs 25 cents to ride, but even though it's only 25 cents, lots of people don't have a quarter and they, they don't ride. But a free thing, if it starts raining on your walk, you might get on the, and a looper comes by, you might get on it just to go on up. This is also where we're going to launch our first electric buses. Um, and so this will no longer just be trolleys, it will be a combination of trolleys and electric buses. It will be coordinated, of course, with the new pier when that's built, and, and the pier is going to have its own kind of like bush gardens, like tram that takes ferries people out to the end if you want to go to the end or not. Um, the Central Avenue BRT, which is this blue line that goes, jogs down here to USF, uh, St. Pete, and the hospital area, and back up on parallel First Avenue North and South. The Cross Bay Ferry is going to be operating again starting on November 1st from this time this this is called the Vinoy Basin by the Vinoy Hotel. That's where the because the pier is under construction and it can't be where it used to be so it's going to be just just nearby. We're going to launch this new service on October 7th. Um, this new and improved looper starts on October 7th going to have these fancy new signs um, as you see here it's going to be free that's probably the number one <laughs> salient factor uh, and um, at every bus stop it's going to have its own schedule so that you'll know uh, when you're standing there when, when the when the trolley or the electric bus is going to come so this was presented to the St. Pete City Council last week by Cassandra and uh, it was approved uh, and so we're taking it for your recommendation and then to the PSTA Finance Committee tomorrow. The way we are funding this uh, expansion of the looper is in a slightly different way than we funded it historically. Basically, for a very long time, um, it was kind of a one-third, one-third, one-third agreement. One-third of the funding came from PSTA, one-third from the city, and one-third from the downtown partnership. The new plan looks a little bit different, but essentially what's going to happen is PSTA is going to run with our own drivers and our own electric bus, the electric bus on this route. And the looper group is going to run the, the trolleys that, are, that run on the route. Okay. We have in our budget the cost of the driver and to maintain an electric bus, of course we don't need to buy any gas for that because it runs on electricity, but we've got all that in the budget. We'll take care of that. And the, and the looper group is going to pay for the trolley operation. PSTA though was successful in getting a, a grant from FDOT to help support the service of $300,000 a year. And then the city of St. Petersburg is going to pay PSTA for a portion of this, about still almost a third of the service, $353,000. So what this agreement essentially is, is a pass-through. We get the money from FDOT and the city, and we write the check for the trolley operations to the looper group. So the net payment is $653,358. Um, the looper group itself also gets $114,000 from the downtown <coughs> partnership. So that's the recommendation. We're gonna have a amazing um, ribbon cutting event, or unveiling, I guess, it's not a ribbon, it'll be a massive tarp, uh, to unveil our first electric bus. And you have a 
copy of that right there on um, next Wednesday at 1030 down at St. Pete City Hall, um, right on the steps of St. Pete City Hall. <coughs> For the transit geeks that you are all in, uh, uh, all are, you might say, Brad, the ribbon cutting is going to be uh, at the St. Pete City Hall steps, but actually the new looper route goes on the other side. The bus stop is going to be across the street because it goes this way uh, down the St. Pete City Hall Street. That's a little factoid for you. But I thought it was okay for the ribbon cutting to be on the stairs, just for the photos. Anyway, any questions? Is there a way that we can get the schedule um, put on like the transit app or the other apps for the phone? Yes. Okay. Uh, that, that we are working on that. Okay. Um, it's not going to happen on October seventh. Right. Um, one of the one of the issues is that the loopers historically have not had the uh, GPS equipment. Mm. We're going to get all of these stops into um, Google for the first time, mm -hmm. so that you know the way Google is. You can type in your ad where you want to go, and it just tells you on transit. That'll be for the first time. It'll have looper in there. Excellent. Once we get the bus stops and this route will all be put into there. So that'll be a first step. And then the real time will be even better once we get the GPS equipment onto the looper vehicles. Mm -hmm. And one more question. Would there be any changes to Route 32? Like to uh, have them to have, how can I put this? To have them uh, interact together or push 32 further out to like the edge district into downtown, uh, part of downtown? Well, uh, Cassandra told me that that kind of, that question about Pushing service further west did come up at the St. Pete City Council just the other day, but um, right now there's no plans to change the 32. Okay. The um, community bus plan uh, that Heather presented that we're now pushing off a little bit until later had some proposed changes to the 32, but um, nothing, nothing set in stone yet. Okay. This funding is uh, from the partnership, the city, FDOT. Is that multi-year, one year? Uh, it's multi-year. Um, Are they all on the hook? <laughs> city of St. Petersburg, the partnership, and PSDA are on the hook uh, for as long as we operate the service. I mean, we have, we have been running it for 20 years. Sure. Um, and we have this in our budget. Uh, the FDOT funding is only for three years. Okay, hey, three is planned. Yeah, so at the end of three years, if this is successful, then we'll have to renegotiate the shares that the remaining partners have. Or maybe you can convince FDOT to give us some more money, I don't know. Okay. Second question was, is I remember part of running the e, the e bus on the loop with the trolley was, because it's part of testing the technology. If we have any kind of trouble, the, the trolleys are there to back us up. I mean, if we were to just start running this on the 32 or the 61, and we, it would put us in a spot of being dependent on it. This way, if, I don't know, if we find it doesn't work in the rain, we still have trolleys to back us up. Is that kind of the thing? Yes, I mean, this was thought to be a short, um, it's one of our shortest routes in the whole go. system. And, um, you know, man, relatively manageable in case there was a problem. Also, when we purchased the, the first two electric buses, uh, the technology was there. We we also purchased a in-route charging station, a um, charging station right down here at number 12, uh, at the bottom of the route where there'll be a manhole cover in the street essentially that the vehicle will pull over and through induction charging, recharge the batteries on the uh, vehicle. Um, that also is not gonna be installed by um, October 7th, but it's hopefully will be installed this fall. Um, Technology has improved, and so the uh, battery life on the vehicles are, are improving. Um, so we think it, the next um, electric buses we buy may not necessarily need to be dedicated to this. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Is the, the budget presented, is that one year, the, the numbers, or is that the three? It's years? one year, yeah. So Brad, uh, you said, um, you know, so if this is successful, it might continue. This, this, uh, the loop right now is basically just tourists taking it. 
Um, so what does success look like? Is it getting is it getting local people on it? I because you know I'm concerned that we just spending a lot of money on to get tourists around and I'd be more interested in getting the people who work downtown the service industry people around so I'm just I guess I'm just trying to figure out what is what does success look like with this program um, I personally kind of share your opinion but um, there's lots of folks that are very uh, reliant on this service for tourists the Dolly Museum the Illinois Hotel advertises it because it stops right in front of there place the St. Pete Chamber of Commerce has been very um, insistent on this main, being maintained or at least still being able to provide a tourist oriented service for res tourists to downtown St. Pete which there are a lot of but um, we've defined success as as I creating a new service that we're going to do a survey on the vehicles next spring and we have certain targets on non-tourists riding it to promote it. We're going to try to promote it as a way to go to restaurants um, for lunch or even in the evenings because um, it's going to run later at night so you could uh, go to dinner on it um, to try to get non-tourists to ride it. Um, there's a lot more people living in downtown St. Pete than there ever has been. Um, we think through different kinds of promotions uh, we can get residents, workers, like you say, um, hospital workers down here, maybe people that park in the, you know, drive from Clearwater, park in the parking garage to go to an event or go to dinner, and then the looper goes right by both of the, the big uh, city garages. Um, our, our goal is specifically to see if we, we can improve the service and make it easy enough to use so that um, non-tourists, residents, or um, workers uh, use it. Well, when, when I was going to grad school down there, I, I never used it because there wasn't the information. So I think that information on the stops would help a lot to get um, people like, like myself when I was walking around down there on it. That's yeah. it. Hopefully. And if I can advocate for this, um, I wrote a similar thing in Savannah, Georgia, and in Columbus, Ohio, if you've been to both of those, that were fantastic. As silly as that quarter is, uh, getting rid of it is fantastic because it's now known as the free looper. And uh, to a tourist saying, it, there's a fare, I don't know if the fare is $10 or 10 cents. I don't want to learn about it. I'll just walk, I'll just take Uber, even though the fare is a quarter. So the yeah. moment you say it's, and, and the word that you need to start saying is hop on, hop off. Hey, it's a free looper, hop on, hop off. Even if you're going three blocks and it's raining, I love that line. Uh, that starts being that, that idea of jumping on and, and going to lunch, going to dinner. Um, using a cheaper parking lot over there instead of having to park right down by the place that's more expensive. That's what I was hoping to use it as, not as a tourist, but out county coming into St. Pete on a, in a car because I was down for something else and being able to use that whole area uh, is just sounds fantastic. But yeah, free, it's silly that quarter. I mean, I couldn't have generated that much revenue. But the, the mind frame of, hey, hop on, hop off. Let me just jump there and go. It's fantastic. I really want to advocate for this. Not to mention the ridiculous price, you know, <laughs> technology people here, uh, of the fare box. Oh, yeah, exactly. Glasses. And everything mm -hmm. about it. I mean, it would take us 100 years to recoup the cost. Is there, are you going to do any kind of promotions with the chamber? I used to work at the visitor center, and we used to send people in droves during season on the looper. Okay. The quarter. It's like yeah. best tour St. Pete for, you know, for a quarter. And yeah. It'd be great if they got on board and, uh, you know, kind of ponied up with a map or, you know, ways to get people to actually go, you know, go to the different places that are nearby and kind of, you know, maybe even do an orientation with the volunteer staff down there or you know, getting them mm -hmm. to get, they do fam trips, so getting them all on board to like take a little ride and show them where the stops are and so they can talk about it to people because that was I think that was one of the main right in front of the chamber was one of the main off and ons for and so will folks be. downtown so getting a bigger buy-in from them then we want this it's yeah. like okay um, I know we've made a lot of entrees to different uh, groups that 
to do what you're try trying to do, but we certainly should do it with the chamber. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Great idea. How will this tie in with events like First Night and the Grand Prix, things like that? Are they, <laughs> is it going to be advertised as available you know, to people yes. to use? Because there's a lot of events coming up during tourist season. Oh, yeah. Um, well, first, the Looper Group is a independent nonprofit company, um, specifically <laughs> so that it can do something that PSDA cannot do by chartering um, their trolley <coughs> vehicles for special events like the Grand Prix, like all the Rays games, like different events that are up here at uh, Vinoy Park and others. <coughs> so you'll see those trolleys. Um, running different shuttles to all those events that you just mentioned. I know, I know they do, and uh, they charge those the people that put on those events for that operation, and that's kind of like a separate service from this. Um, so there certainly will be Looper uh, vehicles riding shuttles for those kinds of events. But then, yes, I think uh, certainly promoting all the different great events that are in downtown St. Pete, and that they can get around on this free, free shuttle. Um, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Now, I hope I'll just meet our mark, especially we can find out that they're just coming from Clearwater. Um, <laughs> if Dave's riding it, then that helps us meet our target. Okay, if there are no other questions, then I guess I would entertain a motion to approve recommending this to the board on behalf of the tribe. So, I'll make a motion. Okay. I'm glad to second that. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, it carries. Got, got your recommendation to the board. Great. Um, okay, and then the next item is Mary Ann's going to talk about the bylaws that we talked about in our last meeting. <coughs> Like Brad, I am filling in for Cassandra. This is, an action, <laughs> this is an action item to approve the changes in the bylaws that we discussed at length at last month's track meeting. I'll just take a moment to go over the four changes, and then at your table is the actual changes, and all you would have to do is vote to approve, and then it would be a consent item for the board later this month. The first one. Membership. Track, track applications may be accepted on a rolling basis and be kept for up to one year. People that are selected to be on track, they come on board. The others, the applications are kept for a year. We resurrect them. Should we not get a lot of applications for this 2019, I go back to look at the ones from 2018 and we contact them and see if they're interested. Term two, members who have met their two-term maximum, unfortunately, must wait six months after their expired term to reapply for track membership, as we discussed. Did we talk about whether that's then, does that then throw, if, for example, Kim or I were to do that, right? would that mean we would then have another two-term option again? You know, would that be yes, you like wait. new, like brand new? Yeah. Yes. You would then start a new membership. Maybe you would apply to be the DART representative, and once again, you get two two terms, two two-year terms. Why is it there a qualifier for DART? That's just the way the track bylaws were formed. There is no alternate for DART. I'm not sure that why that was uh, in the bylaw. I can try to investigate and see if that's something that we want to look at in the future. Yeah. I have no idea. I can look into that, Kim. Thank you. The next one was the quorum notice. We would prefer, it used to be 24 hours, but I wasn't getting a lot of feedback, but we've changed it. Members should respond within 48 hours to that quorum email. Um, it helps us determine whether enough of you are going to be here to have a voting uh, committee. <coughs> and then last, under meetings, agendas are prepared prior to all meetings and they're posted on the website. So you can go ahead and look at that. Agenda packages with all of the backup materials are posted with the minutes at least three days prior to any regular meeting, and at least two days 
prior to any emergency or special meeting. If any of you do not have access to email, you can request a hard copy and I can mail it to you. But we want you to be able to have the materials, review them before you're here and voting. So those are the four changes. Again, they're at your places. If there are any questions or comments, then you can go ahead and, and vote, and these will be brought as a consent agenda item at the September 26th board meeting. Uh, so does that mean we'll have the agendas on Saturday instead of Friday? Well, we mean business days. We okay. mean business days. All right. Does this mean you won't be emailing them anymore? We'll just have to go onto the website and get them. Oh no, no. Oh. I'm still emailing you the track agenda. Okay. But um, we wanted to make it clear that even before I email it to you, it is on the website, the agenda. Gotcha. Any other questions? Okay, then, Madam Chair. I will entertain a motion to uh, accept the changes to the bylaws. I'll move that we accept them. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then the, the next item we have is an information item from Bonnie Epstein on the shelter deployment plan. about our shelter deployment plan and I also just wanted to mention that I was at our complete the city of st. Petersburg complete streets committee meeting this afternoon and I talked about our track star award and I passed out some application or information on applying and then so there were a few people interested so I'm going to mail or send them the application they were asking about paper applications um, so and I will also mention it tomorrow Right and early, 7:30 at the City of St. Per City of St. Petersburg Bicycle and Pedestrian Access Committee. So we'll get it out to South County. Those are the right people. Yeah, if we're not getting a lot of South County applications, maybe we will now. Um, yeah, shelter deployment plan. Um, so a little bit of background about how important shelters are. I'm sure you guys know as transit riders that um, shelters are very important. Um, they protect riders from the heat, the rain. Pretty important here in the summer, especially uh, in the afternoon, hot and rainy. Um, I feel like you know the, the shelters are really nice looking amenity. Um, they have a good reflection on, on public transit, their public's opinion of PSTA in general um, and transit ridership. Um, shelters obviously provide a comfortable weight experience um, for current riders but also encourages transit ridership um, on PSCA. Uh, and you can see in the uh, picture there, that's our Largo Transit Center. We procured a new shelter design um, in 2015. Um, it's a little bit newer and nicer uh, than our old shelters. They're fun and blue. I think you've seen them out in the county. Um, but so with our shelter deployment plan, I'll talk a little bit about um, how we choose which stops to add shelters to. Um, what some of our, our priorities are. So one of the things we uh, like to focus on is adding um, shelters to high ridership stops that don't currently have a shelter. So one of our uh, main goals is to have um, a shelter. At, uh, we look at uh, ridership data, average daily boardings, when we're determining where to place a shelter with high ridership. Um, so we, we're, we had a previous goal of uh, 40 average daily boardings or higher. Um, to make sure that all of those stops had a shelter. So we're just adding, you know, when, whenever we look at ridership, try to make sure that if it has over 40 and has the right of way, that's where we're gonna add a shelter. Uh, we also wanna replace um, existing shel old shelters at high ridership stops. So I think transit centers, um, stops that are, you know already have shelters, but the shelters may look a little bit old or dirty, just need to be um, updated. That's an, another priority. Um, the third priority that we have is to work with municipalities and existing grant opportunities to maximize funding for new shelters. So I'll talk a little bit about some of the, some of the things we're doing uh, with that priority, but really working with the county and cities um, on where they have 
funding um, and where they want to see shelters if they're willing to contribute some money that way we can make our shelter the funding we get for shelters go a little bit further and be able to buy more shelters so I'll talk about our first phase of the shelter deployment plan this is with our new blue shelter um, the one that I showed at the Largo Transit Center um, so for phase one these uh, shelters were all installed in 2016 so the focus for phase one really was to add shelters to existing high ridership locations. So we added new shelters to big transfer centers like the Pinellas Park Transit Center, um, Largo Transit Center, Gateway Mall. Uh, we pretty much finished this phase of the shelter deployment plan. We're still waiting on two permits with Duke Energy um, to install two shelters um, at Tarpon and Huey. Um, permitting process, let me tell you, is, is pretty difficult sometimes, <laughs> especially with uh, private companies. But, um, pretty much all done with the phase one. Phase two, um, here we really focused on um, adding shelters to high ridership stops that didn't have a shelter before. So these shelters were installed in late 2016 and throughout 2017. Um, so like I said, we're really, again, making sure that all stops that have the available right of way and no real permitting issues, the um, property owners are okay with having a shelter or something in front of their property. Um, all of those stops have a, a nice shelter. Um, so we focused here on adding some shelters to Olmerton Road. Um, we added some in South County and South St. Pete. So pretty much done um, with, uh, with that phase. Um, and we're still waiting on permits for those shelters on Gulf Boulevard and Gulf View Boulevard um, at, in Clearwater Beach. So our phase three, um, we've ordered these shelters and we've received them here at PSTA um, and we're working on getting the permits to install these shelters. So for this phase, we're, uh, like I mentioned, we're focusing on partnering with um, municipalities and the county um, to use grant funding to maximize the funding for our shelters. So we can order and install more shelters for less PSTA funding. So some of the shelter or the places we're looking to add shelters here are um, the Skyway Marina District. The city of St. Pete had some grant funding um, for the Skyway Marina District. Um, $200,000 is going to help us add, I think, 12 shelters um, in the Skyway Marina District. So all of the high rider or somewhat high ridership stops um, in the Skyway Marina District will have a new blue shelter. So working on the contracts and permits for those we're also adding some uh, to the Wheelman area and other areas of unincorporated Pinellas County through um, a community development block grant. Um, so again, just waiting for some permits and contracts for those. Um, and then we're adding some shelters to, uh, I call them gap areas, but areas where uh, we didn't have a lot of the new shelters go in. Um, gonna add some to those areas. And I'll talk uh, just briefly about our shelter match program. Um, so the way the shelter match program came to be was when we first per, uh, procured this new shelter design and we put a, uh, some of the shelters out in phase one, we, had, we were approached by some municipalities saying, oh, we really like this new design. When are we gonna get that? And you know, didn't have a really clear answer for all of the municipalities because you can't just say, oh yeah, with the funding we get, we can't, you know, completely replace all the all the shelters that we have in our system. So we weren't weren't able to give people a clear time. Oh, you'll get them next year or in six months. But so we came up with this shelter match program where if the municipality or um, any other partner wants to contribute some funding, um, do a 50-50 split with PSTA um, on the shelter, we're able to get those shelters in quicker. Um, you know, that's pretty good for some revalu revitalization plans that different municipalities in the county are working on. Uh, we're also working with a few a few community partners on uh, custom shelters. So the picture here is from a ribbon cutting in Dunedin. We have a, an art shelter uh, that we helped contribute to. Um, we put in a new shelter pad and uh, the hospital, Me Study Dunedin Hospital that's located behind the shelter um, was able to contribute some funding for an artist and we're looking to do a few more of these art shelter projects 
um, in North County in the future. I know there's one more going in in Dunedin. I don't know exactly when, but we've got the location picked out and they're working on procuring an artist. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned before, uh, North Pinellas Cultural Alliance, that's what our shelters are doing in North County, Skyway Marina District. Uh, we already have, we're in the contract process for um, the shelter match program and then looking to do shelter match programs in Largo and Pinellas Park, possibly Gulfport. So anyone that's interested, I'll, I'll be in communication with them. Any questions? I'd just like to say the um, shelters that have been replaced on Gulf Boulevard and Madeira Beach, well, I found out, I believe, it was because the city of Madeira Beach had to say with it, they are not shelters. Right, the umbrella they shelters? The shelters down, they put two little metal things yeah. with an umbrella that's so high, it's cute, Yes. but it's totally unfunctional. And now, and this last summer, they have replaced the one right at 150th that is a highly used one. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I saw that one sitting there, two little things with a little umbrella, yeah. metal umbrella, there's no shade any time of day, no way it would shield the rain. Or yeah, for the, so that was the city of Madeira Beach mm -hmm. picked those uh, out. How does that? Um, well, uh, so they requested those shelters, so they, they wanted to add them. Uh, I think I know they added them at some stops where there they there weren't currently shelters in place, but that was their choice. Mm, there were shelters. Well, no, there's one. Yeah, right there's a the there's bridge, a couple that are. It wasn't are there new. before. It was yeah. just a stop. But the other one, they took down a nice big shelter right at 150, mm -hmm. right where the um, municipal beaches. Mm -hmm. Right at 150. And yeah, no, I, I know, I know where you're. Shelter down. Yeah. And now there's some little little umbrella little shelters. Umbrella. Yeah. So I I didn't work too much on that project I know, I know the you. city I was the city. was very adamant about putting those umbrella shelters in because they thought the design was cute so I know the other That's beach community <laughs> yeah they're they're just cute yeah, yeah it's very hot it's some metal this may, may be the question I'm asking about I I ride I'm a very ad hoc rider at different times of days different locations I'm all over the place and I'm curious about the right of way, maybe this is the wrong place to ask it, about the access. It seems like some places, while I was trying to look for places to give them star awards, mm -hmm. it seems like some places don't want the bus stop there. Like we have a little bus stop yeah. barely poked against yeah. the, and is there an effort? How do we go get, I don't know if it's a Publix or a Walmart or a McDonald's, to, to get an extra couple feet to put a tiny shelter, because I see people sitting out there in the pouring rain, mm -hmm. feeling like Charlie Brown, or worse, I'm getting off a bus, looking at the pouring rain and looking at a soaking stop. I'm, yeah. waiting, I'm waiting for Uber to come pick me up. Yeah. And, and boy, a little umbrella, what, what a great line, was oh. what I keep thinking was if there was, it doesn't even yeah. need to be the single wide, it certainly doesn't need to be the double wide, but. Yeah. Right, yeah, I mean, so some, some, um, some property owners are really against having even a bus stop there. They, um, they don't even want the sign, let alone a bench, let alone an umbrella. So some property owners, they don't even want the sign. Some are fine with the sign, but aren't really okay with the shelter or a bench. Okay. Um, you know, and but we are working with different property owners. Some, you know, some people are very okay with having a shelter. They're willing to give us an easement. It just takes a lot of time. Anything with legal language or lawyers, I, it's a little bit of a nightmare, but like it, we do get them to work out and we do put the shelters in. Um, one sort of exciting thing is when new developments come in, a lot of municipalities or the county are requiring them to coordinate with PSTA. So I'm seeing that happen a little bit more often where maybe they're not super willing, but they get some, you know, something from the county that they need if they coordinate with us or provide us an easement. I know there's one, um, there's a developer I'm talking with in Clearwater on Gulf to Bay. There's a few on 19. So it's, I mean, I haven't been, I've only been here for three years, but the past year or two, definitely seeing. Well, that was, people. I was hoping was maybe they get a waiver on how many yeah. uh, parking lot lights if they put in a bench or some such. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, but. I'm curious. Yeah, it's a, it's I, like I can a, see the headache to yeah. it. 
but do we can we get down to smaller and smaller shelters that wouldn't be as offensive yeah. to some of these guys? Well, particularly, yeah, and I'm thinking North County because we, we, right. a lot of our stops don't meet the, the mm -hmm. requirement of number of stops or number of. Priorities. But it still pours rain but up there. It still pours rain. <laughs> that's right. And so I end up, you know, going at you know, to blocks to try to get to a, a, to where I know there's a shelter. And then there's some that are just badly placed. I mean, there's one by J C Penney on Countryside Boulevard. And there's really no safe access to anything there, but there's a shelter that, there, whereas the most commonly boarded one doesn't have a shelter. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it is a, a little bit weird sometimes. I think uh, some perhaps that the stop in front of the J.C. Penney used to have higher ridership or mm -hmm. uh, an, a good access point, and then over the years, someone came in, closed that off, yeah. and the shelter yeah. stays there. Um, we do have a little bit of trouble moving shelters around, just again with the, the permitting requirements sure. um, through Pinellas County. But sure. um, I think we are working to get like a, a standard easement and a process with all the municipalities of saying, okay, we want to we want to get an easement here, or when a new property becomes available, saying, okay, when this is redeveloped, getting getting an easement for a shelter. And, and again, I don't know if this is the right place to say it, but I would love to when we get a low volume use that they give us a, a, a better <coughs> upgrade that we give them a star award you know oh, it's yeah. like we didn't really earn a, a stop but you gave it to us or especially if you kicked in half because like we might look at it and just go well yeah that's a stop and not really know that the guy gave you know he did that yeah, extra oh, absolutely. thing I, I, agree. Yeah. I don't know how we would find those guys but we're trying to give star awards to anyone who we can yeah, and we, that's not apparent to us that he went the extra mile and, yeah, Ram Realty definitely did go the extra mile. I've yeah, been I'd love that. I'd love to be. So able to, yes. I'd love to be able to say thank you, and the only way we have Absolutely. is those Star Wars. The Star Wars, yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. Good. Oh, by the way, the other thing, because I noticed this is true, like in Oldsmar, where where they did yep. put in that walkway, what they've said is that the store owners have said that you know there's the shoppers have come in and said, you know what, I shop here now. I mean, what part of it? Sure. <laughs> that's okay but they, but they said other people have said too it's now I can safely shop here and so the same thing is if you see a new stop go in and tell the shop owners that you know thank you for and, and I know Elizabeth you've done some of that as well so yeah no. often often sadly it's the worker in the in the McDonald's uniform the Walmart uniform mm -hmm. sitting in the rain mm -hmm. waiting for the bus and you think that poor guy right. yeah. he just had the, an umbrella uh -huh. you know that's the smallest cheapest uh, shelter here he's having he's got a lousy job and a lousy day and now he's got to go sit in a rainstorm waiting for his bus. Yeah, you know, we were always all talking about will not reflect the rain at all. Oh, okay. They I don't, don't, they don't, don't They're so high. Yeah, don't, they don't give it okay, a shape. They're just decorative. Then. Okay, it's okay. All. Well, whatever. Yeah, we, we have a few point. different design, like shelter sizes. So our standard is a four by eight. We do have some Those thinner ones. ones. We have a four by twelve and a three by twelve that um, we put in, I know we have some on Gulf Boulevard on the beaches where that right of way is really tight. Um, but we, we've been able to put some in there. So Get them out there. Appreciate we do have a lot for phase three that just haven't gone out yet. They need, we need to be a little bit better about the permitting process sometimes. It can be a little bit difficult with, um, with municipalities, but we're, we're working on it. They're getting out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, that's our last information item. Uh, now it's time for our member comments. Before we get to member comments, I have two notes that I got from Mary Ann. The first is that the next board meeting on Wednesday, next Wednesday, will be um, the, one, the one annual evening board meeting. So if you've never been to a board meeting because you can't go in the morning one, uh, it's at 6 p.m. on the 26th. So it's here at PSTA downstairs, and so consider that. And then, um, Marianne wanted me to let you know that you will be receiving, at least as of now, there are four uh, track uh, star award uh, applicants. Uh, she will be sending those out to you electronically, and then we will be voting in October at our October meeting. You know, and, and it, like you said, we're, we can approve all of them or none of them if we choose to, but. But they, they will have been reviewed by PSTA also uh, staff to, to make sure that it meets the criteria. And so again, I'm 
asking you, please, if you find anything from any of your municipalities, please let us know because get put in those applications because once they once they receive an award, they'll be like more likely to say, oh, you know, this is cool. I want to do more of this. I'm hoping. I'm being a little optimistic. So, um, member comments. Are there any? Yes. Well, I was gone for two months and I spent most of it in Buffalo. Um, so I got to experience transit in Buffalo, which was really interesting because Buffalo also has a subway. Oh, okay. So that was very interesting to see how many people were still using that. Um, I also had to use the transit app while I was there because they don't have any other app but the transit app. Oh, they use transit app. Yes, and the buses in Buffalo run very, very, very a lot late. And the transit app was actually telling me, we think you missed your bus. And I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, bus still hasn't come yet. Because yeah. I mean, the buses were running 10 to 20 minutes late in Buffalo. Wow. It was bad. Um, they have a downtown area kind of like Williams Park. Um, it's called Shelton Square, except you have to get off at one corner, but the bus to go back is not on the exact same corner. You may have to go to a complete different area of Shelton Square, and it's really in a big part of downtown Buffalo. Um, they're also moving to a similar um, Flamingo Pass like we have here. They also have additional bus routes. All their 100 bus routes are school buses. The B city of Buffalo does not provide transportation to students. They get a bus pass on the first day of school and have to use special metro buses or the regular metro bus to go to school. And uh, another thing that they have that if Tampa keeps going, we may have to go to, they have buses that go directly to the suburbs. So they take an expressway, one of the throughways going out of downtown Buffalo, and they'll have a bus that goes directly to like Alden or Niagara Falls or Orchard Park. Kind of like what regional rail does. It's, in Philadelphia, they have the regional rail lines that right. go to the suburbs. So yeah. Right, because I mean, they do have the subway that does the same thing, but this way it'll drop you off right at a park and ride way out in like Hamburg on the Lake and all this. So that's a different interesting thing that they have. Um, and then yesterday, not yesterday, last week, Friday, I had to ride the bus in Tampa, and something I saw that they did on their bus that I liked is when they announce and you're approaching a major street, it says transfer available to this line. So, like for example, when you're riding the 30 down towards downtown yeah. and you yeah, get to yeah. Kent, to Del Mabry, it says transfer is available to Route 36. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it doesn't do it at every single stop. I mean, for some of our stops, it would get annoying because every time a 52 stop, it would have to announce 97 or 98. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but it would be it's it's something interesting. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm done. Uh, okay, good. Thank you. It's very interesting. Any other topics? Yeah, Richard. Well, Ms. Epstein's uh, presentation uh, reminded me of uh, there, so there was a stop removal at Bogusiega, um, right across the street from Bogusiega, and so there's a crosswalk. It's in the school zone, and then for whatever reason that that stop was removed, and so now the kids have to uh, walk further, and they also um, it's a little bit. Um, Dicier. I mean, there's more busy roads that they have to cross, and now they're standing in somebody's front yard. And so, um, before there was a sidewalk uh, that they, they would stand in. So I'm just wondering, you know, somebody complains about this this new stop that they're all going to because it's right in somebody's front yard. Um, I mean, what's going to happen? Are they are they going to eventually have to walk, you know, a half a mile to get a bus? I I, I don't know why that stop was removed, but you know, like, uh, was I wonder if it was a complaint? I'm just worried, you know. It's already it's, it's a little bit more risky for them now. It's right at the end of the the school zone, and so you know at the end of the school zone, that's when people you know are already accelerating. They don't care about the end of the school zone. I just wanted to bring that up. We did receive a uh, request to um, return the shelter to that location, and I thought we were in the works on doing that to where it used to be uh, by the Which tennis courts. No, no, no. It's um. So it, that would be, be yeah, that'd be on the um, the west side of Bogusiega. There's a little like a uh, uh, um, childcare facility right across the street. So northbound. And what's yeah, that? Northbound 14. No, it's 23. 23. Uh, I don't know. If, I, I don't think the 14 goes up. No, right, 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 wrong one. Yeah. I think that's uh, 11th Avenue, maybe. No, 9th Avenue. What is the process to talk about getting their stops or removing a stop? I don't want it on my lawn. We just call the switchboard, is that? People call the I help regular them. customer okay. service all the time okay. and ask for bus stops to be removed or moved or added. Or, okay. um, and then we have a whole 
Bonnie led heavily uh, with power brokering and all this stuff to analyze it and then reach a decision. All those folks that are sitting over there have massive debates. <laughs> my last thought, it, it hit me with the STAR program. It would be really cool in my mind if TRAC had a logo. PSTA has a logo with a little loop, it's just PSTA. If we had TRAC, even if it was just in the PSTA, if we just said TRAC with the loop around it. Um, or if it, I, I have five or six, you know, just something. I hate, I hate writing out T.R. AC. I wish I could stick like on Facebook and I said, hey, I'm in track. You guys should, and I wanted, I wanted to put a logo of anything, you know, even if it was just in a circle or a square or I'm written over a bus or something, just something that was a logo. Yeah. Any other member comments? All right. Well, thank you very much. Our next meeting will be on October 16th. And, uh, and also, again, remember, next Wednesday, tomorrow night, will be the uh, board meeting if you can make it to meet the board meeting. Uh, thank you very much. Meetings adjourned. So, of course, it's a, it's just, could be worse. <laughs> 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 <laughs>